Good day everyone and once again we're back together. It's been a while and of course uh, now your uncle is an award-winning content creator and uh, the for outstanding influencer in South Africa. But uh, without any further ado, I know you're preparing for meds tomorrow. I thought I'd just look at uh, some word sums, okay, in particular sequences. Let's have a look at them together. Right, so they say the first term in a geometric sequence is 14. So this is from November 2022, right? Uh, and the sixth is 448. Now, uh, just remember, when we're talking about geometric sequence, we know that the formula is always AR uh, n to the minus 1, right? So we know in this case that we're given the value, the first term, to be 14, right? And they tell us that the sixth term is 448, right? So, uh, oh, what an ugly 8. So in this case, what am I going to do? Right, they say calculate the value of the common ratio. So let's say T6, we know this will be A, right? Remember A is 14, uh, R we do not know, uh, 6 minus 1, which is 5, right? We know that the sixth term is given as 448, so we know that we will have um, 14, R to the exponent 5 is 448. Okay, so we can divide both sides by 14. And in this case, uh, the, we take the fifth root, right, of 448 over 14. So I'm just going to uh, quickly put that in my calculator, right? So I'm going to say uh, shift... Uh, no, that's the cube root. So let's shift the fifth root of now we've got 448 divided by 14. And that gives me 2. So it means that our R value is equal to 2. Right? So the next question, they say determine the number of consecutive terms that must be added to the first six terms. Right, in order to obtain the sum of 114,674. Now, so we know that the sum would give us 114,674, I believe. Yes. All right. So what we do know is that they have taken the first six terms. Right. So let's uh, write that down. They've taken the first six terms, right? And they're asking how many more terms must we add, right? So how many more must we add after the first six terms in order to get that entire sum? So what I'm going to do, ladies and gents, I'm going to say the following. So I'm going to just take the sum from the first term up to that whatever nth term, right? But remember, because we're looking for these ones in particular, right? In this case, I'm just going to subtract the first six terms. Right, let's look at uh, uh, the formula that we use, right? So we know this is a geometric sequence, right? So in this case, remember the sum uh, is simply given by A into Rn, in this case, our value for R common ratio is greater than 1, right? So in this case, I'm going to say Rn minus 1 divided by R minus 1. Now let's substitute. We know this will give us 114674, uh, if I remember correctly. Yes. Right, so that's going to be 14 into 2n minus 1 divided by 2 minus 1, right? So, with the, which will give us 114674. Right, now let's do this quickly. 2 minus 1 will give us 1. So, in this case, uh, we know this at the bottom, the denominator gives us 1. So, we might as well just get rid of that denominator because anything divided by 1 will be itself, right? So, I can divide both sides by 14, right? 
and I am now left with 2n minus 1 is equal to, right, let's do that quickly. So that's 114674. Divide that by 14, that gives me 8191. 8191, uh, eight, right? And if I take the one to the other side, it becomes 8192, right? So now all I need to do, uh, I'm not going to try and, uh, you know, find out what is the power of 2 that will give us uh, 8192. Uh, I'm just simply going to introduce logs on both sides, right? So I'm going to say log there, log there, right? But remember uh, the rules of logs, you can have n log of 2, which is equal to the log of 8192. And to get n, you divide both sides by 2, log 2 rather. Okay, so that cancels with that. So what's the value of n? Okay. So I'm going to say the log of my answer, uh, of my answer, right, divided by log of 2. Okay, uh, nope, it seems like, okay, so I'm just going to log 8192, okay, divided by the log of 2. Okay, I get a value of 13, right? So n is equal to 13. But now remember, what is this n value? Remember I said to you, I'm looking for this entire uh, uh, number of, um, you know, terms. But remember, they've already added the sixth term and they want to know how many more must be added. So I'm going to subtract 6 from this number. So it means that therefore it will be 13 minus 6 and that should give us uh, 7. So it means I must add 7 more terms in order to get that particular sequence. I hope that makes sense, ladies and gents. Right, as we quickly rush to the next one, right? Now they say to us, if the term, if the first term rather of another series is 448, and the sixth term is 14. So note what they've, they've done. They've actually just flipped it around, okay? Um, so they say calculate the sum to infinity of the new series. Now, please remember that when we talk about sum to infinity, we're simply talking about a convergent sequence, right, or series. What do we mean by convergent? It means as the sequence goes, you know, term one, term two, term three, term four, and so on, right? The sequence keeps getting smaller and smaller. And that can only happen when the common ratio is between one and negative one, right? So in this case, let's check, right? They say to us, the first term is 448, right? And they say that the sixth term is actually 14. Now, you remember, in the previous, uh, um, you know, sequence, what we had was the other way around. The first term was six, uh, I mean, it was 14, and uh, um, the sixth term was 448. So what does this mean? It means that they've taken the R value and they've actually inverted it. Remember, R value was two. So it means our R value is going to be one over two. Or if you wanted to check it, you can say, well, T6, is a r to the 5 and this is equal to 14 right but what is our a value that's 448 right uh, r exponent 5 uh, is 14 so we can divide both sides by 448 and uh, divided by 448 right that cancels with that and of course if we take the fifth root okay of that value 14 over 448, uh, I can actually bet that you will get 1 over 2, right? So in this case, it means that our R value is no longer uh, 2, but it is now 1 over 2. And which now qualifies that it is actually between uh, 1, rather, and uh, negative 1, right? 
So what happens? It means you're going to start out with a sequence, right? The term will be 448. The next term uh, will be, you know, half of that. So that will be uh, 224, the next one, so on and so forth, right? Now they want the sum to infinity. Remember, for the sum to infinity, right? All we simply say is that this is going to be a divided by 1 minus r. And so our a value will be 448 divided by 1 minus our r value is 1 over 2. And in this case, 1 minus 1 over 2 will give us 1 over 2. So 448 divided by 1 over 2 should give us twice that number, which will be 896. Okay, so it means the sum to infinity is 896. All right. Okay, let's look at the final question here. Right, they say, well, if the sum, okay, they give us the sigma notation there. Uh, that's 1 over 3p plus 1 over 6, right? Uh, the sum from p is equal to 0 to k, right, gives us 20 and 1 over 6. Now, you need to know how to work with uh, mixed fractions. They want to know what will be the value of k, right? Now, in this case, let's now find the terms of the sequence first. So, if we're saying the sum from p is equal to 0 to k, okay, of 1 over 3p plus 1 over 6, right, uh, gives us 20 and 1 over 6. Now, in this case, what we're simply going to do, let's find term 1 of the sequence, right? So, what? how are we going to find term 1? Term 1 is where p is equal to 0, right? p is equal to 0. So what would be our term 1? If we substitute 0 there, we get 1 over 6, right? And then what about term 2? Okay, so let me just write it out nicely. So this will be term 1. Okay, so let's look for term 2. And what is term 2? That's now where p is equal to 1. So I'm going to have 1 over 3 times 1 plus 1 over 6, right? So I'm going to add 1 over 3 plus 1 over 6. In this case, uh, 6 is our lowest common denominator. You can just simply uh, add these up. So it means I am adding to the number that I had, I am adding 1 over 3, right? So uh, for the next sequence, I am adding 2 over 3 because now I will say 1 over 3 multiplied by 2, right? Plus 1 over 6. So notice in this case, what's happening? You keep adding by 1 over 3, right? Uh, to get to the next sequence. So it means this would be a, uh, uh, an arithmetic sequence, in which case it means you have a common difference, right? And what is our common difference? Our common difference is simply going to be 1 over 3. You can take term 2 minus term 1 uh, to determine that, but I'm, I'm sure you will get uh, to this answer. Now, please, I want you to note, ladies and gents, so now we're looking for the sum for this sequence, right? So we're going to say the sum of our nth term, right? Remember, in this case, we say this is n over 2, right? Um, in uh, Plus, this is going to be 2a plus n minus 1 times the common difference, right? That is the sum. And in this case, what it gives us is 20 and 1 over 6. I'm going to write that as a fraction just now. So we've got n over 2. We want to find the value of n, right? We said our a value is 1 over 6. Sorry, that's 2 times 1 over 6, right? Plus n minus 1. And our d value is 1 over 3. Right, and now I'm going to write this as a uh, fraction. Right, please note how you deal with the mixed fraction. You always take the denominator multiplied by uh, that number there. So 20 multiplied by 6 will give me 120 plus the numerator. Right, so 20 times 6 will give me 
120 plus the numerator, that will give me 121 divided by 6. Okay, so you keep that denominator there. Right, now let's deal with the left-hand side. Okay, so we've got n over 2 into, right, so we've got 2 over 6, 2 times 1 over 6 will give us 1 over 3. Plus, now note I'm going to multiply into this bracket. I'm going to have 1 over 3n minus 1 over 3, right? This is equal to 121 over 6. Okay, this should cancel with that, okay? And in this case, I'm going to say this will give us 2n, okay, if I multiply there, right? So n over 2 multiplied by uh, n over 3, so that will give us n squared over 6, right? Uh, if I multiply numerator to numerator, denominator to denominator, so that will be 121 over 6. Of course, uh, I can drop those denominators because they are the same. And so n will be the square root of 121, and that will give me 11, right? Now, I want us to be very careful. Those would be 11 terms in the sequence that started from term 1. But look at our sigma notation. It starts from 0. So if it's the 11th term here, what term is it there? It's actually term 10. It's 1, minus, it's one down, right? Uh, because here we didn't start at term 0, but we started at term 1. So in this case, it means that the value of k, right, will be equal to, um, uh, sorry, uh, will be equal to 10. Okay, right. So it means that n is actually equal to uh, k plus 1. All right. I hope that makes sense, ladies and gents. And I am going to leave it there. And hopefully you guys got it. All right. And I'll come back with some more as you prepare for that math exam tomorrow. Shop, shop.